Hey everyone, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and in this episode of CUDA Crash Course, we're going to be taking another look at performance evaluation, this time with our sum reduction examples that we went over uh, for about six different uh, implementations. Right, so uh, just like we did with matrix multiplication, and if you're following the C++ data structures series, um, with the different sorting algorithms, uh, we're going to have a visual comparison of the different uh, techniques for implementing sum reduction and the different optimizations we did. Right, so inside of our actual repository, right, so inside, um, so this is going to be, you know, CUDA crash course with the CUDA programming, right, so inside of here, we've got this plotting directory where we're doing this performance analysis, right, and so we had matrix multiplication, but now we also have sum reduction, and uh, feel free to take a look at any of this data, so this data is collected, we can go ahead and pull this down, all of this uh, data is collected from a Titan V GPU, and it's going to be averaged over 10 different runs at each input size. And so if we go ahead and go into perf test, um, you can go ahead and set, you know, how many iterations you'd like to average over, as well as the upper bound of the array size. So uh, this has an upper bound of 2 to the 20 elements that uh, we perform some reduction on. Uh, but what we're really, uh, what, what we're really measuring is just the... Uh, how long does it take to do a single kernel, right? Uh, not necessarily the entire operation. So uh, we're comparing equal amounts of work, but not necessarily the entire sum reduction. So the way that we implement the sum reduction in kind of a bulk synchronous model, we do a very large reduction first, followed by um, a, sim a smaller reduction next. So this is uh, just comparing individual kernel launches, not necessarily the entire flow of multiple kernel launches, right? So what we're going to do here, right, so we call launch perf test. Now launch perf test is covered in common.h, right? And so it has all of our different implementations. So starting from our very naive sum reduction that we call sum reduction one, all the way down to uh, the last one we did as far as optimizations go, which was this warp reduce one where we use a device function to unroll the last loop of sum reduction, right? And so uh, we go ahead and collect all that data, right? And that gets passed back and written out to a data file um, at the very end. So, right, so if we go ahead and compile perf test and we run it, right, so, uh, oops, dot slash perf test, you know, we'll end up getting uh, this file, this timing.dat, and this will be, you know, some timing. So this is on a Pascal, uh, this is on a Pascal architecture GPU, but we've got the um, unencumbered uh, with no graphics on it, Titan V GPU data um, stored in the repo, right? And so here, here are the actual results we've got. Right, so just as a reminder of the different optimizations that we did. So starting out, we had our naive implementation. Uh, followed that, we got rid of our warp divergence by you know, using sequential threads instead of threads that are strided by a power of two or, uh, or a multiple of two. Then we got rid of uh, bank conflicts by aligning all of our threads together. And right? so that would affect how we're accessing shared memory. Then we looked at uh, work packing, right? So doing multiple uh, parts of some reduction in uh, individual threads, so packing more work into threads. Uh, and then finally, we looked at that uh, that idea of unrolling that last iteration. Right, so let's see what the data actually says. So unsurprisingly, our naive implementation ended up being the worst uh, as we scale to larger input sizes. So over here, we've got our data points at 2 to the 20. Right, so we can, let's go ahead and put this in, uh, uh, there we go, let's go ahead and put this in compare mode, right. So now uh, we can see that over here at 2 to the 20, you know, clearly the naive is the worst. Um, then we had a no divergence. So again, that's where we uh, used uh, sequential threads. And so getting rid of that warp divergence actually saved us quite a lot uh, in this big gap right here. Uh, then uh, getting rid of bank conflicts, we see that that helped us uh, even more. And this is just using the same alignment of threads, but you know, packing the threads together uh, and you know, really caring about how we're accessing shared memory. So even though shared memory is fast, we still have to be careful about things like bank conflicts. Then we looked at work packing, right? And so this is, uh, you know, packing, uh, in this case, it was just packing a single element of work extra into the, uh, uh, into our first round of sum reduction. So we launched half as many threads and each thread before loading into shared memory, it would load in a partial sum. Right, and so this gives us quite a benefit, but as you can see, it can be misleading at lower uh, numbers of elements where it actually takes longer once we're at around the range of uh, 65, 536 elements 
but as we get larger and larger, we see that uh, this work packing is actually better. And then we see we get a fairly constant benefit compared to the work packing version just by unrolling that last iteration of sum reduction. Right, so this is you know this is a you know basic you know what you should expect uh, maybe going through you know an optimization process. Um, it's 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 important that you you see how these things scale out, right? So going up to you know in this case we're going up up to two to the uh, twenty elements, but a lot of times you may even want to push this further and see how it goes in the extreme of sorting things. Um, or rather doing some reduction on things, you know, up to the scale of, you know, maybe an array that's a gig uh, in size, not just say uh, two to the 20 or a meg in size, right? But uh, that's gonna go ahead and do it for today. As always, uh, feel free to check out this. This spreadsheet will be linked below. All this data is on the repository. Um, on the spreadsheet, again, is also the matrix multiplication data. And then of course, um, as linked in the other video, we've got the algorithm timing data. So this is for, you know, bubble sort, selection sort, insertion sort, merge sort, and quick sort. Sorting from an array size from 0 to uh, 1,000 elements. But that's going to do it for today. Feel free to check out any of this code and data at github.com slash coffee before arch. And for all the other series that we do as well, including systems programming, parallel programming, C++, GPU, the our CUDA crash course, and uh, some CPU programming stuff. But I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and I hope you have a nice day.